I'm going to say this straight. Respawn Punisher is horribly designed. It's definitely the most unhealthy ability for the game right now, actively restricting weapons and players and slowing the game down. But why exactly do I have this hatred for the ability? What's its purpose? And what can we do to transform it into a functioning and even fun ability for both sides of the battle? Let's discuss Respawn Punisher along with some special guests, starting with how it works. Respawn Punisher was added in Splatoon 2 as a potential counter option to the heavily aggressive style of Splatoon 1. Quick Respawn was a very good ability in that game and encouraged fast-paced and action-packed gameplay. The devs didn't want this to stay so prominent, so not only did they rework Quick Respawn to balance it better, but they also added Respawn Punisher to help combat it. And the ability is pretty good at doing that exact thing. Respawn Punisher not only reduces Quick Respawn's effect by 85%, but it also increases the special loss and respawn time upon death. Your average respawn time goes from a base of 8.5 seconds to a whopping 9.25 seconds if you get splattered by a Respawn Punisher user. This sounds great, but there are also a few weaknesses to the ability. For one, this ability only affects your splats. While it is great to keep the enemy respawning for longer, if you die then you'll be stuck in spawn for almost 10 seconds, and you'll lose almost 3 quarters of your special gauge upon death. The newly added tactical cooler also completely negates the effects of respawn punisher, as of patch 2.1.0. Long range chargers and other backline weapons like to use respawn punisher the most, especially the former. Since they're positioned so far back, it can be really difficult to splat them while they have the ability to outrange and outsplat you, essentially removing the risk reward factor of respawn punisher. This ability has gone relatively unchanged in Splatoon 3, however this game is a lot more aggressive than the likes of Splatoon 2, so you could technically justify respawn punisher's return. However, even glancing at the ability's properties can help you realize one of the core design flaws behind this ability. Splatoon 3 is advertised as a fast-paced shooter game, with lightning-fast movement and chaos everywhere. An ability that makes you play less is simply just not built for this kind of game. If I want to play Splatoon 3, I usually want to be moving around and shooting, not sitting here waiting for an insane amount of time because an elite to look to me from across the map the wrong way. You know, the maps with little cover and flank options. Those maps. Quick Respawn was fun because it enabled you to play more aggressively and take more risks, but here, it's the exact opposite. You actively can't go places on the map now, or else you you not only lose more of your special, but lose extra time playing the game you paid money for. And besides, it's not like Quick Respawn is even that dominant anymore. Like I said, Respawn Punisher was added as a hard counter to Quick Respawn. This would have made sense if it was added in Splatoon 1 when the ability was super relevant, but since the rework to Quick Respawn, it's only seen use on a few weapons. Some examples of QR weapons are the Splatana Wiper, Light and Dark Tetradulis, Tri Slosher, and S Blast 92. The ability is in a much fairer spot now, and it doesn't need a hard counter when it has soft counters already that keep it in check. While Quick Respawn is a good ability for sure, having a hard counter that does this much to hurt the pace and fun of the game for both players feels awful. However, it's not just the recipient that can feel neglected by this ability. From the user's perspective, getting denied of your ability can feel absolutely awful. Tacticaller is viewed as one of the best specials in the game right now, once again enabling aggressive play and keeping the pacing of the game fast. Tacticaller not only completely removes respawn time, but also removes any special loss from your whole team, so long as they take the beverage provided. This is an effective counter to respawn punisher, and can feel absolutely awful for the person with the ability, since they essentially got the reward removed from the risk reward design philosophy behind their ability. Either the respawn punisher player feels dominant over the game while the recipient is prevented from playing, or the player feels great after getting their tactical buff, but the respawn punisher player feels useless. That's the bottom line. I haven't even talked about the fact that it's forced backlighters into more extreme and passive playstyles, as you can see judging by this gameplay, and has really only hurt the viewing experience and kills to deaths ratio. We can even back this lack of gameplay up with some stone cold facts, or at least some data. Thanks to stat.inc and to Joy for gathering up the data, we can estimate the relationship between Respawn Punisher and your average match of Splatoon 3 X rank. We compensated for modes, stages, and looked at over 230,000 matches, ranging from December of 2022 to June of 2023, to get these results. Keep in mind that this data is a correlation and not a causal analysis, and this data may not fully represent the population at large. However, we found that on average, each Respawn Punisher user in a match decreases the kills per minute by 3.75%, the match length by 1.68%, and increases the difference in score between two teams by 4.09%. Therefore, we can prove that Respawn Punisher does in fact have a major negative impact on the length and events of a game, such as kills per minute and scores. Fun fact, we looked at varying levels of X power, but surprisingly the numbers were almost exactly the same across the board. We can assume that this has a similar impact across all levels of play judging by this data, so not only does Respawn Punisher feel like 
garbage to fight and use, but we now have evidence suggesting that this does in fact impact matches negatively. Special thanks once again to Joy, former Splatoon 1 competitive player and current data scientist, along with Stat.Inc for providing us with these stats. To truly drive my points home, I decided to ask some players what they think of Respawn Punisher, and a few of them even thought of potential ideas for reworks to the ability. Hi, I'm Splatdroid, a Splattuber and co-captain of Arctic Blitz. Respawn Punisher is one of the least common abilities to find people using due to the higher skill factor that's required to actually get value from it. If someone who dies a lot uses Respawn Punisher, they're gonna be hurt by it a lot more than the other team will, so it's not valuable at all. This part of the ability is pretty healthy, but I think you should get an even better reward for using it correctly. Maybe you get a little swim speed buff for 5 seconds every time you get a kill or something? It just needs to be a little better and more appealing for players to actually use a lot, that way it's not only used on E-Leader. Thanks for having me on, Derp Knight. Bye! Hello! I'm King Bee, a content creator that mostly focuses on commentated Splatoon gameplay. I'm here to talk about why Respawn Punisher was added, why it is no longer needed, and why it is a bad ability in general. In Splatoon 1, Quick Respawn activated every single time you died. This made the ability extremely broken and was almost the only ability people ran on their gear. In Splatoon 2, they changed the ability to only activate if you died and didn't get a kill, and also added Respawn Punisher. These two changes made Quick Respawn a lot less common. Now in Splatoon 3, Quick Respawn is only common on a few weapons, so there is no need Need for this ability anymore. Respawn Punisher gets completely outclassed by Haunt. While using Haunt, if someone kills you and after that you kill them, they receive the effects of Respawn Punisher. However, using Haunt will not give you the effects of Respawn Punisher. Thank you for having me on, Derp. I'm Salivy, a Nintendo content creator, primarily a Splatoon content creator, and well, let's just jump right on into it. So first up, I think that the bad design of the ability comes in the fact that it's only one ability. And what I mean by that is you can only just put it right on your shirt. And well, this function does work good for some abilities like South Jump, as it's one that's really an on or off effect. It doesn't work for here, and I really think that a good way to mitigate that would be make it stackable. Make it so that you could put it, you know, multiple chunks across all of your gear, and so that this this way, you know, you could just apply one or two respawn punishers if you don't want as intense of an effect, but you still want some effect on other players. And the other main problem I see with it is that it has too intense of an effect of pushback against the user. Now, I know it's supposed to be a double-edged sword, however, I still think that it should be a bit less pushback towards the user, maybe equalize them. I'm not exactly sure. Comment down below your thoughts, and once again, thank you for having me on, Derp. Respawn Punisher has been an ability since Splatoon 2, and the entire point of the ability is because the devs are scared about S1 QR meta coming back to the series. Which in my opinion is arguably the most fun meta the series has ever seen. So what's so bad about Respawn Punisher, and why is it hated throughout the series? Respawn Punisher slows down the game so much, forcing you to play the game super slowly, allowing the enemy team to take space easier. Plus, it's mainly only even decent on one weapon, the E-Leader, forcing you to do something called respect the leader. You can't push it, and overall you just have to play super slow with it, and that's why it isn't really played right now. The meta is too fast, and stuff like Ballpoint is a better option for a backliner. Although leader counters ball point, it has too many counters of in itself to be ran effectively right now. And that's about it. Thank you, Dermage, for having me on. The fact that most of the people here said different things than me about Respawn Punisher and its flaws really shows just how bad of an ability this is design-wise. I'm quite glad that this ability isn't seen too much competitively, since if it was, this game would slow down to a snail's pace. That being said, do not go out of your way to harass or belittle anyone who uses Respawn Punisher. That's not what this video is about. Play the game however you'd like, and remember, this video isn't 100% fact. Thanks to everybody for joining me in this massive project. Go subscribe to everybody involved, their links are in the description. Aside from that, make sure to take care and have a good day. And remember kids, don't get sniped.